Hey everyone, Ken Davis from Acme Tools. Today we're going to talk about some different things to consider when you're purchasing a miter saw. When looking to purchase your miter saw, there's four types you might be looking at. A sliding miter saw, a dual bevel miter saw, a compound miter saw, or a single bevel miter saw. Today we want to talk about some of the different tips and tricks to help you decide which one best suits your needs. The first type of miter saw you might be looking at is a sliding dual bevel miter saw like you'll see to my left here. Now things to consider for a miter saw like this is what capacity of wood do you realistically need to cut. It's always important to come in with the types of dimensions you're looking to do for your household projects. Something like this is going to allow you large cut capacities for different materials like siding and 4x4s. It's also very important to note that this is a dual bevel miter saw, which this is going to allow you to keep your piece in one spot, change the angle of the saw, rather than constantly maneuvering your material. Now if you decide that a sliding dual bevel compound miter saw is too much for your needs, you might look at just a compound miter saw. This is going to be a single bevel miter saw. It's going to allow you to cut 45 degrees to the left, but it's also going to reduce the cut capacity you have. This particular model happens to be a 10 inch. So this is important to keep in mind when you're looking at the material you need to cut and how much reach you need that blade to make. Now if you look at this compound miter saw, decide that the nice compact style is what you want, but you want to have that dual bevel feature, something like this 12 inch saw will give that to you. It maintains the compact compound miter saw style, but it allows you to bevel 45 degrees to the left and 45 degrees to the right for your convenience. Now keep in mind with technology nowadays, if you're somebody who's constantly on the move, battery operated miter saws are on the market and a great option. So there's a few things to look for that are important when purchasing your miter saw. One of the things you want to make sure is that your miter saw has a clearly marked scale so you can make sure you're making an accurate cut. It's also important to make sure that your miter angle has solid detent presets and also to make sure that the fence support is good and sturdy for your material. Check to make sure the saw you like has a smooth gliding action and also look for dust collection ports and also the location as those could play a factor in where you're able to store it in your shop. It's also important to make sure that you have a good blade guard system and a trigger locking feature. Some saws have a single trigger lock and some have ambidextrous trigger locks. You might also want to look into other accessories and features that might come with the saw such as lasers and or light guide systems to help you line up your cut. While there's many things to look for before purchasing your miter saw, there's also a few facts to know on the front end. For example, it's important to know what size of blade you're looking at. Commonly, miter saws have 12 or 10 inch blades. Now, a 12 inch blade can be very nice for cutting larger materials such as 4x4s and other thicker materials, but a 10 inch can have its upside as well, as it's a little bit smaller and lighter. Also, you might be able to put the same blade in your table saw, but it is of course important to mention that table saws sometimes use rip blades as opposed to miter saws using cross cut blades. Tooth count is another important decision to factor in. If you want rough in 2x4 cuts, you want to go with a lower tooth count blade, but if you want high quality fine finish products at the end of the day, you want a higher tooth count blade. Space is one of the last and most important factors to put into your decision. For example, if you're looking at one of these sliding miter saws, it's important to note that you could need up to four feet of room behind the saw if you're going to factor in a dust collection hose or a dust bag, plus the sliding action. Now, if you're set on having a sliding saw, you could look at something like this model, which has a flat back, allows you to put it right up against the wall, but still holds to that sliding action. For your compound miter saws that do not have the sliding action, you're able to butt these directly up against the wall. Now you would also look at a corded versus battery operated model and of course whether or not you want a standard style stand or if you'd like a rolling stand. These are all important things to factor into your mobility and to your shop size. Well thanks for joining us today everyone. I hope these tips help you with the purchase of a miter saw. But if you do have questions feel free to get online, call us and talk with an experienced sales representative.